Hey everybody, it's Black Omori back at it again. I'm going to do a let's play of my inline CSS puzzle box, both for people who are on devices where it's non supported because it's a desktop only experience, uh, and for posterity's sake in case the technologies that enable it go extinct. So, this puzzle box is made entirely using inline CSS. Um, it doesn't use any CSS selectors except in a very specific case, which I think is permitted. Um, and it uses no JavaScript whatsoever. So there's no JavaScript at all on this page. Every single feature you see is just HTML and CSS um, features, which are used in very peculiar ways. So the first step of this puzzle box is to um, find the trick. So it requires a bit of a keen eye. So you'll notice that the uh, screws holding everything in place on the corners, the four corners, um, the bottom left uh, screw is a different color and we can actually click on it to pop it out. And then we click on this little hole over here and it pops off this panel. And that reveals the first proper game. Uh, and so this is a lights on puzzle, which is a variation of the classic lights off puzzle. The objective is to turn on all the lights. Uh, and that seems like it would be easy, but unfortunately when you click on a uh, square, it actually flips its neighbors as well. So if I click on this, it not only turns on the light, but it also flips its neighbors as well. So the way I know how to solve this is to essentially um, go row by row. And given a certain row, we can turn on individual cells by clicking its immediate neighbor to the, to the bottom. So for this one, we click this to turn that on. We click this to turn that on. And we keep going like so. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we then end up with a bottom row, which we can't do anything with. So um, what we have to do is start at the top again. And there's some algorithm for deciding exactly which cell at the top to click. But I just kind of click randomly. So let's try this one first. Uh, let's go through the process, and we end up with this. So how about we do the middle one? Let's do that again. Let's go through here, and maybe let's click this one one more time. It takes a bit of time if you uh, just just as a matter of, of trying things, even things you've tried before. So now we get a purple button which we can click, and that pops open this slider doohickey. And if we slide this to the side, it pops out this drawer. So we pull this drawer out all the way. And now we can see we've got a Tower of Hanoi game. So the objective of this game is you can pick up disks and place them down uh, onto other towers. Uh, and the objective of this game is to um, put all of the uh, disks onto one tower. So if I do that pretty quickly, put this over here. Um, there we go. Uh, however, it's telling us it actually wants us to build it in the center tower. So let's do that. Uh, and also, I'll just point out quickly that uh, when I said that there is a very specific case in which selectors are being used, uh, here is where it, a, a selector is being used, but it's actually not being used on the HTML page itself. Actually, this display here is actually an embedded SVG used as a background, and within that SVG file is CSS selectors, a st CSS style sheet. So there's no HTML like CSS selectors, but there are SVG CSS selectors. So that's that's a little caveat. Um, However, it is actually possible to implement this game entirely in inline CSS without SVG, but I wanted to use the SVG technology because it's fun. So uh, I'm just going to go through uh, this process quickly to move all the tiles to the center. I've played this so many times I can just sort of whip, get everything in order. So let's put this over here, put that there. Yeah, just uh, just a matter of shuffling the tiles around. That goes over here. And then finally, we get the code 92277. And that's a code for this little combo lock up here. So if we drop that back down there, we go 92277. And that pops open this drawer. So um, this is a nonogram game. Uh, it's also called Pick Cross. And uh, the objective of the game is that each uh, label on each row and column says, um, what order and how long each contiguous segment of on cells are. So if we click on the, the, the board, we can turn things on. We can also mark them as an X to say that we definitely know they won't be filled. Um, and so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through um, some tricky logical segments of this game because this particular uh, instance of the puzzle, it definitely has only one unique solution. But a lot of uh, nonogram solvers online 
tend to give up after a certain point and then just say, oh, there's probably multiple multiple solutions. I can't figure it out. But there are actually there is actually a, a deduction, a, a set of deduction steps to get to the unique solution. So I'll point those out. Um, so to start with, uh, we have to um, well to start with these two columns are overdetermined, so they uniquely uh, say what the the what it's going to be filled. So we'll just do those. So it goes one, two, four, and then like th this is this is the only way that these columns can be filled given this description. Um, and from there, uh, for six, what we can do is we can say like uh, six either starts uh, here if this if this is a contiguous row, either it starts here or starts here. So um, those are the two extremes. So when they're overlap, we know that it must be filled in. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that we know that this must be filled in. Um, and so I'm going to I'm going to like solve this uh, using normal nonogram puzzle solving techniques. And I'm not going to talk while doing it. We're just going to speed through until we reach a tricky section. Okay, so um, we've reached a critical section. Um, I think this is one of the places where a lot of the online solvers get stuck. So the thing I'll point out is that this cell right here uh, is a critical place. Um, basically, we can decide, we can tell uh, if, this, if this cell is not filled, so like, let's guess that it's not filled now, that means that the ones in this row have to go here and here. <clears throat> and then what that would then imply is that because only ones can be in this column, that means that this must not be filled. And then that means that this uh, row here, this four, has to be filled. Um, <clears throat> but then we get a contradiction because uh, the, the six in this column is, is um, invalidated. So there's a, there's a break in the contigu contiguity here. So we have to undo all that. Um, and now we know for a fact that this has to be filled. It can't not be filled. Um, and then from there, uh, I think we can continue our logical deductions. Okay, so the final logical deduction step is how these cells are going to be filled in. So um, essentially we can just look at if this cell is filled in, then um, this can't be filled in because of these ones in this, this row, um, which means that one has to go here because uh, two ones can't go over here, which means that this can't be filled in, which is a contradiction because only fours can be in this in this row or this column. So let's uh, clear all that out. So then we know that this can't be filled, or sorry, this can't be filled. Therefore, uh, this one must be filled. And then the rest of the puzzle really falls out from there. And then now we can now click on this purple light and that pops open another uh, a little slider doohiggy, which pops out another drawer. And this drawer contains another handheld game. So this is a maze game on a triangular grid, and you have to navigate it to find all of the orange spots. And the orange spots give you clues as to what the next code is going to be for this combo lock up here. Um, so I'm going to be comprehensive about exploring this maze so that you can see all of the um, secret messages. And the first message is, you're in a maze of twisty passages all alike. So if we drop down here, we're going to go down this little corridor here. You found a map. Sadly, it's for a different cave. Let's continue. A booby trap sprays you with cheap perfume. So the first uh, dot we visit has a sign, and the sign says, all its numbers are unique. So normally you'd be writing this down. I already know what the code is off the top of my head, so we're just going to explore. You think you spot a box of estrogen, but are mistaken. This tiny alcove smells a bit like lavender. You find an intriguing new graffiti tag and snag a photo. Oh, we missed something. As you run down the hall, you almost trip on an egg bug. A sign says it has only one odd number. Rats, a dead end. A sign says it is in descending order. Let's visit these two little caverns. You spot an exit sign, but it only points to a granite wall. This little alcove is decorated with stuffed birds. You find a neat little pile of 64 cobblestones. The next sign says it has digits 2 and 0. And the final sign, which we're coming up on, 
says, it adds up to 25. So if you write all those down and then you uh, infer what the uh, code needs to be, you'll find that it's 9, 8, 6, 2, 0. And that pops open the final panel, which is this edge match game. The objective of this game is to move all the tiles and rotate them so that all of the uh, gears line up with their neighbors. And we got some boundary conditions on the very edges, which say where the uh, how the tile should interface with the edge. Um, and so I'm not going to walk through the logic of this. Um, I would actually recommend uh, printing these tiles out and doing it manually because uh, I understand that this UI is a little bit cumbersome. But uh, I'm just going to solve this uh, relatively quickly. All right, so uh, we got all the tiles in the right spots and the right rotations, and you can see it makes a question mark. And if we click on this uh, this pink light, or sorry, this purple light, it reveals the final slider doohickey. And if we slide this open, it tells us, good job. So we finished the puzzle. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, there is a also a How It Works blog post, which, will des which describes all of the technologies used, and I'll link it in the description. So yeah, thanks for watching.